Hey there, Saki here from Saki Tech, and in today's video, I will show you all the new amazing features on iOS 11 running on an iPhone 7 Plus. And that's it, let's get right to it. Also, if you're wondering whether or not if your iPhone is compatible with iOS 11, see this list. All right, let's go. So the first feature has to do with the keyboard. So let me just pull up the messaging application over here. And as you can see, we have the keyboard. And let's say that you have small fingers and you want to use the keyboard with one hand. Sometimes it is a problem. What you can do now is you can actually minimize that keyboard to a smaller size and use it with one thumb only. So if you're left-handed, you can left justify it. If you're right-handed, you can right justify it. And all you want to do is, as you can see, there's a little world symbol down here. You tap and hold on that, and that brings up the option that says keyboard settings. And from here, as you can see, I can left justify this. So now I can use one finger to type in if I have the bigger iPhone 7 Plus or the 8 Plus. Or if you're right-handed, you can actually uh, uh, right justify it. But if you want to bring it back to the regular size, all you do is tap this arrow and boom, you get an expansion. And let me just show you the right-handed side as well. So tap and hold, tap this icon. It's now right justified for easy one thumb typing. All right, so let's move on to the next feature. The next feature is the all new control center and its customization capabilities. Now, first and foremost, let me pull the thing up. So you pull from the bottom as usual and you have the new control center. Now, before I dive in and show you all the new features of the control center as far as customization goes, uh, just a couple of things that you need to understand. Uh, the top two big squares over here are actually expandable. So if you press and hold, they expand and give you even more options. And this is uh, done using the 3D touch. And if I press and hold on music, as you can see, the music player expands. And from here, I can play, go to next track, change the volume if I want to, and even tap this icon here and change the speakers or connect to an Apple TV connected TV. All right. So these are the options you have. Press and hold to expand it. And uh, then over here, we have all the regular stuff, you know, lock the screen rotation and all that stuff. And again, you can press and hold most of these buttons for expansion. So if I press and hold on this, it's not going to work. So that means that it's not going to expand. But if I press and hold on the brightness, it does expand. I can increase or decrease the brightness from here using this as a slider. And I can even enable the night shift mode if I so desire. And if you tap anywhere away from the uh, bar, it goes back to the control center. Uh, same thing with the volume. Okay, and you can increase or decrease the volume using this software slider. And let's go back. And here's the uh, screen mirroring option. If you have an Apple TV, you can project the screen onto your Apple TV. All you do is press and hold, you get an expansion, you pick the TV that you have Apple TV connected to. And again, you can do a couple things with all these little things. Here's the uh, flashlight. If I tap and hold it, it expands the flashlight slider and I can turn that on at low capacity or I can turn it on to be super bright. Of course, you cannot see it because it's hidden in the back here, but you should be able to see some reflection. So let's turn that off like that. Go back and you can do the same thing with uh, this is the Apple TV remote control. If you have an Apple TV, you can use this toggle here to control the Apple TV. And then let's go back into the control center settings and show you how to customize it and also pull in a couple more tips relating to the control center uh, right here. So go to the settings, scroll down, go to control center, tap it. And at the bottom, it says customize controls. Tap on that guy. And then as you can see on the top here are the options that are already included, which I can remove. I tap this icon, I can remove anything that I want. And at the bottom here, you have all the controls you can actually add to the control center. So let me show you, let me add a couple more here. Let's add alarm, camera, flashlight, at home, low power mode. Let's add the notes. Let's add screen recording. I'm going to show you what that is, by the way. Uh, let's add in the stopwatch and the timer. And let's actually go back out there, see what happened to the control center. So when I pull it up right now, there's going to be a lot more controls available. For example, here's the camera that I just added. If I tap and hold, I get options. Take a selfie, record a video, record slow motion video, take a portrait. If you tap any one of these, it'll take you into the camera to the option that it was referencing. All right. There's the home icon. If you press and hold the home icon, you can control the uh, home connected accessories such as uh, Bluetooth lights and stuff. 
And there's that battery symbol. If I tap this, as you can see, low power mode is on or off. So you can do a lot of things from the control center here. But the biggest thing is, is this button here. This button is the screen record button. So basically, you can actually record the screen of your iPhone if you so desired. So press and hold, or you can just tap on it, it starts. But pressing and holding gives you more options. I like it this way. And at the bottom here, you can actually enable or disable the microphone. And then when you're ready, you can tap on screen recording. I'm sorry, you can tap on start recording. And it's going to start a countdown, three, two, one, zero. And now it's recording the screen. Let's go back out here, exit, swipe back and forth for a second. And let's go back into that button, press and hold, and tap on stop recording. And it's going to say screen recording video saved to photos. Like tap on that. It goes into your photo gallery and I can launch it now and I can actually play exactly what I just did on the screen as you can see. All right. Not bad at all. So screen recording is now built into your control center for quick and easy access. And of course, before I move into it, let's go back in here for a second and you have things like the notes. So if I tap and hold uh, the basic idea is if you press and hold on most of these buttons, they will expand to give you extra bit of options. And if you go back into the settings, of course, customized controls, you do have all these different settings that you can utilize if you so desire. And I'm sure they'll be adding more by time. Let's move on to the next feature. All right, so the next feature has to do with the new screenshot utility. So basically, obviously, you take a screenshot by pressing and holding the power button and the home button. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use the uh, soft key here that I uh, created just a couple of minutes ago. If you tap that, it's going to take a screenshot. But what happens is the screenshot goes to the side. You can tap on it. And this happens anytime you take a screenshot, even if you were to use power and the, I'm sorry, home key and the power button simultaneously, that will take a screenshot and you'll see the exact same thing happen. It's going to minimize to the side. You tap on it. This is what you get. From here, you can make some modifications to the screenshot before you save it. So you can actually uh, crop the image. Okay. You can use the pens to highlight things. So I can highlight something that I want. I can use the pencil to draw on it. And I can just bring attention to certain things if I so desire with my fingers. And you have a bunch of options down here. You can tap this to share if you want. Uh, you can, you know, send a message, send a mail, whatever. But when you're done, you click done. And then it gives you the options. Delete the screenshot or save it to photos. If you want to save it, you do that. And then when you go to photos, it's going to be sitting uh, right as your last taken photo right here. Okay. So that is the new screenshot feature. Next thing I'm going to talk about is the new dark mode. So what you want to do is you want to go to the settings. You want to go to general right here. You want to go to accessibility and then go right here, display, tap it. And in here, you have a couple options. It says invert colors, color filters, blah, blah, blah. If you tap on invert colors, you have two options. You have the classic invert, which is no good, but you can use the smart invert, which is going to turn your phone into a black and white interface. So if I go back out, as you can see, everything is lighter on the eyes. Instead of being so bright, it is much darker theme overall. If I go back into the settings, as you can see, very easy on the eyes. And of course, when you want to turn this off again, later you go right back into this uh, menu here. You go to invert colors and you just simply turn off the smart invert. And now you have the full brightness as usual. OK, so as you can see, everything is a little bit different. The next thing I want to talk about is the Siri. So Siri now has a more natural voice. And of course, to demonstrate, let me bring in another iPhone that has the old version, which is the iOS 10, and then compare how the new Siri sounds as opposed to the old Siri. So let's keep this very simple. Let me just ask a couple of questions of Siri. Hey, Siri, how are you? I'm happy to be alive. Can you tell me the weather forecast for New York tomorrow? The weather's looking good for New York. New York tomorrow, up to 80 degrees. All right, so let's do the same thing with the new iOS 11 and see how much more natural she sounds or he based on your settings. Hey, Siri, how are you? Very well. Thank you. Give me the weather forecast for New York tomorrow. Looks like nice weather coming up in New York. New York tomorrow, up to 80 degrees. All right, so it looks like uh, Siri is going to be sounding a little bit more natural as opposed to the 
uh, iOS 10 version. And one more really useful thing you can do uh, with the uh, control center is if you enable the option, you're going to see a car symbol. And that's basically do not disturb while driving mode. If you go back into the settings, go to control center, go to customize, uh, it's going to be this thing right here. This is not the regular do not disturb mode. This only applies when the iPhone senses that you're driving using all the sensors inside. So if it does uh, think that you're driving, if you enable this, now, anytime somebody calls you, sends you a text message and stuff like that, you're not going to get notified so you don't get distracted while you're driving. So if you like that option, you can enable that when you get, uh, once you get access to iOS 11. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about has to do with the Apple Maps. So let me let's uh, launch Apple Maps really quick. I actually have it here already. And basically, uh, with the new Apple Maps on iOS 11, you get some detailed information for some of the popular places uh, such as uh, massive airports, major airports, such as major airports. So if I uh, zoom in on the airport, this is information I'm getting. This is detailed information in regards to the actual building. So I can zoom in and it will show me exactly where all the shops are and uh, restaurants are and stuff like that. Uh, this kind of thing also applies to your favorite shopping mall. If it's a big one and it's a popular one, you can search it on Apple Maps on iOS 11 and you can zoom in on it and it'll show you the individual location of all the stores on the maps in this format, okay? So detailed Apple Maps also available. All right, so that was some of the top tips, tricks, and features for iOS 11. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to subscribe to Saki Tech for more iOS coverage. And also make sure to give this video a thumbs up and guys have a fantastic day. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, just drop them down in the comments section below. And also before I forget, if you do use Instagram or Twitter, make sure to follow me on both at Saki Tech Online. All right, have a good day.